Come on in. Come on in. We need to have a conversation. Let's have a conversation. Come on. Let's have a conversation. Let's have a conversation. Come on in. Come on. Come on. Come on. I want to talk kingdom today. Come on in here. Let's talk. Hey, God bless you, Erica Draper. God bless. Come on, Jeanette Cortez. God bless. Skyron Warren. God bless. Come on. Everybody hit the share button. Come on. Let's have a conversation. I'm outside. I want to have a conversation today. Hit the like button. Everybody hit the like button. Let's build this. Let's break the algorithm today. Come on. Let's break the algorithm. God bless. God bless. Come on in. I've never shared my thoughts, but I'm going to share my thoughts now. I want to talk about it. I'm a pastor of a leading church. I have people in my church that are Democrats. I have people in my church that are Republicans. But I have people in my church that are saved. Come on. Let's have a conversation. Come on in here. Let's have a conversation. Y'all know me. I'm from the streets. I got saved from the streets. I got saved in prison. So I, I'm not the church. For, I'm not that. I don't play church. I don't play politics. I'm a kingdom citizen. The only person that was in my cell when I got saved was Jesus. Come on, let's have a conversation. Let's have a conversation. Jesus got saved before I got into the political arena. Jesus got saved before I started voting. Jesus got me saved before I started voting. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's have a conversation. It's time to really have this conversation because if we are really kingdom citizens, what in the heck is going on right now? What in the heck is going on right now? You mean to tell me that Jesus is glorified by what's going on right now? Over who's the, whoever the president isn't and whoever the president is. You mean to tell me that Jesus go right? Let's have a conversation. I want to talk to you because I voted for Donald Trump. I voted for him. But guess what? He's not in the presidential office. He's not there. There was an inauguration. There was an election. Yeah, there's evidence of stealing the election, all that. That's neither here nor there. Right now, he's not in the office. He's not there. And I voted for him. I voted for him. I believe what he did for the American, I believe, I believe what he did was really good for the government. That's why I voted for him. But does that make me not, not a Christian? Me basically saying Joe Biden is my president and I say submit to that president. Does that make me less than a Christian? Does that make me less than an apostle? Because I believe the Bible and I still stand for the kingdom. But the kingdom of God is not here. This is not the land for the kingdom of God. If anybody's reading their Bibles, you'll know the kingdom of God is spiritual and it's not going to be manifested here completely to where it can stay here until the king comes. Until the king comes. No matter how many miracle services you do, no matter how many deliverances you do, no matter how many uh, times you share the gospel and the angels stand up and they celebrate, that kingdom door closes. It closes right back. You open it up and it closes right back. You want to know why? Because the Bible says, open wide ye get gates and let the king of glory come in. Unless the king is here, which we know the king is Jesus. He's coming to sit on the throne naturally, literally on the throne of David as a promise to David that God made. And that's not even over America. That's over Israel. That's over Israel. So you mean to tell me people aren't saved? They're not believing God because they don't support Donald Trump. You mean to tell me that people aren't believing God because they support the president who's in office? That don't mean we agree with all his policies. We, I don't agree with abortion. I never agree with abortion. Even when I was a Democrat, I never, I never agreed with abortion. I never agree with, come on, I never agree with anything that was outside of the Bible. So today, I'm going to introduce to you the new political party. We're called Biblitarians. Biblitarians. This is the new political party. We believe the Bible. And if the Bible says in the last days, the world is going to go crazy, I don't expect anything else from the world. I believe what the Bible says. I believe what the red letter says. I need you all to hit the share button. I voted for Donald Trump. Because I believe what, what, what the Lord told me about him in 2016. When I was a Democrat, I grew up a Democrat. I don't even know why I was a Democrat. I just don't know. I, I think that's just something that happens to us. And, and I want you all to hear me. I don't want nobody. Don't get on here. Don't be rude. Don't be disrespectful. Because this is my Facebook. I can say what I need to say. And I got Bible to back up what I'm saying in my position. All right. And what I'm saying is, is that God never intended on us being political. You cannot be 
Christian and political because sometimes your political views are going to cross your, Christ, your Christian responsibilities. And we're seeing that now. We're seeing it now. Some people saying, well, I could be biblical and political. No, you can't. Because somewhere along the line, one of those values are going to be crossed. And you're going to have to choose the Bible or you're going to have to choose. There's a difference between standing, which is spiritual, and state, which is where you are right now. You're going to have to choose when those lines are crossed. We deal with it every day in Christianity. We deal with it every day where we believe that we're sons and daughters of God, but we don't feel like we're sons and daughters of God. We know we're sons and daughters of God. We know we're blessed in heavenly places standing, right? But right here, we might be broke. Right here, we might be struggling. Right here, we might be messed up. And what I'm saying is the body of Christ, God would not. I'm going to tell you something right now. The kingdom of God is spiritual. And God would never allow the spirit of his kingdom to be managed by mankind. God has to institute his kingdom. God has to establish himself. God is the one who saved us. The Bible says none of us have gone after God. All of us have gone astray. Jesus had to step down out of glory to get us saved. And we say, I'm not going to submit to this president because of uh, abortions and homosexuality. Now, listen, I don't support those agendas. But can I tell you something? Jesus submitted himself and subjected himself to a horrific death, death to the highest level of sin. You, They slaughtered the son of God. They killed the son of glory. They killed the son of man. And he submitted to that killing. He submitted to that beating. And we sit up and tell him, well, I follow the Lord and I serve the Lord. But you can't even, you upset, you upset over something that is never really going to change. This, this government and this system belongs to the world. It's of the world. Now, why are you loving the things of the world and expecting the love of the father to be in you? There's going to be a challenge you're going to be challenged. You're going to be challenged. And what's happening is, how is it that we feel that the kingdom of God is not going to move on if we don't have the right person in the White House? You got to be kidding me. The kingdom of God has continued to advance with, 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 with the wrong people in the presidency. Azusa Street happened. Brownsville happened. All these different revivals are happening. And the church is still progressing regardless who's in the seat of government. You got to be kidding me. And I love my country. I love my rights. I love it. But I'm going to tell you something. What I will not do, what I will not do, I will not handcuff God. I will not allow anyone to handcuff God by saying it has to be this individual or else we ain't, we ain't serving the Lord. You know, people right now are attacking people for being Democrat. Listen, there are people who are Christians who are Democrats. They don't believe in abortion. They don't believe in all that stuff. But I'm telling you, there are Christians, Bible-believing, Holy Spirit-filled people who don't agree with that stuff. And let me tell you the truth. Even in a conservative party, some of y'all, some of y'all is homosexual. Come on here. Some of y'all got tendencies. Some of y'all had abortions. Some of y'all had this. So you can't, you can't judge people for what you hide secretly. You can't judge people for the stuff you've encountered. And all of a sudden, oh, it's under the blood. No, the devil is a liar. You have participated in some of the stuff you're judging other people for. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Now, I, I voted for Donald Trump. So I put up post on purpose. I'm not no dummy. I talk to my conservative friends. I talk to uh, Democratic people. I talk because you want to know why? I want a consensus of what they all believe the Lord is doing. And then I take it and I apply it to eschatology. But the reason why we're having so much division in the church over the fact that over the fact that whatever political party you have chosen, God is not. There ain't no Republican in heaven. There ain't no Senate in heaven. There ain't, come on, there ain't no president in heaven. There ain't none of that in heaven. I'm sorry, it's not there. And if you think the revival that we're going to experience is based on someone who occupies a office in the United States of America, you are beyond. You are beyond. Okay? What I'm saying is I, rather I, now watch this, I voted for Donald Trump. But what I'm saying is, is that I believe the Bible. I believe what the apostles received. I believe what the Holy Spirit used the apostles to write. I'm not going to rewrite scripture for nobody. That's antichrist. Just to let you know, that's antichrist. You can't pick and choose what you do. When you come to Christ, you gave your life. 
You gave your life. You promised God you would obey the word. Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, you love me. You don't twist the Bible. We don't shift the Bible. We live the Bible. It's the standard. Your ear is not better than what was written in them pages. God spoke to people a long time ago. And he allowed that to be instituted. This is what I'm saying right now. As a kingdom citizen, we should not be divisive. We should not be trying to control people's thoughts. That's socialism. That's socialism. The minute we, uh, we stop allowing people, we say, you're no longer saved because you're not a part of the Republican Party. We can't do that. You're no longer saved because you're a part of the Democratic Party. We can't do that. Jesus came into their heart through a decision that they made to believe that he was able to pay for this. Sin, something that God did well before this election. I thought we were mature. I thought we can disagree. You know the stuff we, we can disagree and still get along. It doesn't look like that. It doesn't look like that. This looks like we are demonizing brothers and sisters that Christ paid for, that the blood of Jesus, are we better than the blood of Jesus? Are we more passionate than the Holy Spirit who desires to, to make disciples? Are we more passionate than he? And I'm telling you, my heart is broken. My heart is broken. Because I voted for Donald Trump. My heart is broken over this nation. My heart is broken over the church. My heart is broken over our, over our intense desire to have our own way. And then say, and then add a little bit of God. You can't have your way and add a little bit of God. And it's all God. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. It has to be all him. It has to be the leading of the spirit of God. It has to line up with scripture and eschatology. Some people don't even realize we are in a biblical plan. The Bible says the wicked will grow worse and worse. What you're seeing is a part of the red letters. Jesus' disciples asked him, what will be the times? What will be the seasons? And when will the end be? He answered all three questions. And he told us what it was going to look like. And when I look at my Bible, you know what? I find peace. I find peace. You know why I find peace? Because at the end of the day, Jesus is going to save his people. Jesus is going to bless his people. My revival does not hinge on who's in the office. And the last time I checked that when darkness was bad, the Holy Spirit hovered. When darkness was bad, God was postured to do something new. When darkness formed, God came into the earth. I, the last time I checked is when we was without, when we was uh, without strength, when we were full of sin. It was the very moment that God entered in. And we're looking for revivals to be in areas of light. But light doesn't work in light. Light doesn't work in light. Light waits for darkness to build. The last time I checked, the Bible says when sin abounds and it's starting to abound, the love of the, watch this, when sin abounds, grace abounds all the more. I'm looking for opportunities to be promoted. I'm looking for opportunities to excel. I'm not looking at the, listen, they could pass all the, they could, they could try to pass all the laws they want to, but I'll tell you one law that's stronger than any law that they could write on paper. The law of prayer, the law of worship, the law of an obedient life, the law of submission to God, the law of truth, the law of, come on, they, they can't, they can't hinder you. You're focused on the wrong thing. They can't stop you. They cannot deny you. They cannot block you. You got to know where you are in the scheme of things. You cannot just rely on, oh my God, we, we still, gonna, we trust in the Lord. We believe in God. Listen, man, I'm going to tell you something. Right? I'll tell you what I learned a long time ago. The reason why I ended up in prison, because I was believing the wrong thing. And I believed it with my whole heart. Y'all need to catch what I'm saying. Just because you say you have faith don't mean you have the right source to be believing in. You've got to make sure, even as a Christian, just, just, watch this, just as a Christian, the source of what, you, what you're receiving from and the source of what you're releasing into the earth has got to be different than the world. This government is designed for America. It's not designed for you as a Christian. And I can prove it. I got, I, man, I've been on a journey since last year. The Lord has taken me on a journey. He said, Jason, people don't know the real kingdom of God because the real kingdom of God deals with three elements. It deals with a king, it deals with a people, and it deals with a land. You cannot say America is that land. You can't do it. You can't do it because Israel is that land. 
God has instituted that Israel is that land. You can't revoke what God spoke. Yeah, but I'm a spiritual Israel. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a spiritual um, um, Jew. I'm a spiritual. No, you're not. The Bible says there will be no Gentile, no Jew, no barbarian, no Cynthia, no male, no female, but a new man in Christ. But a new son. You're a new entity. You're a new individual. You're a new race. Did you catch what I just said? The Bible tells us. The Bible tells us where we ought to be positioned. We should not be fighting over no office. There's no way. There's no way. The Holy Spirit is not empowering this type of argument. The Holy Spirit is not giving you the strength to do this. You're doing this in your own flesh. This is your prejudice. This is your bias. This is your racism. This is your understanding. The Bible says lean not to your own understanding. And we drag God in there. And then we go, well, Kim Clement said it. But Kim Clement also said every time he released the word, he would say, listen, I can miss it. I can make a mistake. But I honestly believe this is what God is saying. Why ain't nobody using that? Why ain't nobody understanding that this man of God, he's not the scripture. Kim Clement is not the scripture. And a lot of these prophets out here, y'all not the Bible. Y'all not the Bible. That's why prophetic in the New Testament in our times today represents individuals who are allowed to be checked. If I prophesy something, you have the, uh, you have the obligation to check me on what I prophesied. The Bible says, let the other prophets judge. But now we prophesy something. We like, oh, that's the word of the Lord. Listen, man, your confirmation is not scripture. Because people can confirm your soul. People can confirm your flesh. People can confirm what you want to see, what you want to do. We've been doing it for a long time. That's why I said the level of prophesying is not the level of prophecy. That's why a New Testament, New Testament prophets aren't allowed to write scripture. Name a New Testament prophet that wrote scripture. Only the Old Testament. You want to know why? Because God was completely in control and there was no filters involved. You want to know why? Because the Holy Spirit would come upon one person. It's like internet. It's like being plugged into an ethernet cable. You get full access to the internet, don't you? But in Wi-Fi, you got to share the bandwidth. So every device that's in the house, you start to sprinkle and scatter the frequency. Come on, come on, uh, Tyler. God bless you, Apostle Tyler. Now you, you start to you start to scatter the frequency. So in the Wi-Fi, you start to have glitches. You start to have problems in what's being communicated. You start to have problems in how much uh, uh, speed you're getting and how, how, how much megabytes you're using. Listen to what I'm saying. That's why they can't write scripture. God said, I'm going to use the solid foundation of the apostles to start writing scripture. You want to know why? Because apostles, they are, they are, they are focused. They have stability. They're not moved by the wind. The prophets, they work with the wind. That's why God told Elijah, prophesy to the wind, to these dry bones. The wind works with the prophets. And when the Bible talks about the saints going from every, uh, from, from every doctrine, from here to do here, uh, from to and fro, being, being blown by the wind to every wind, every type of doctrine, the Bible's talking about that being conveyed on the wheels of the prophetic. And what we're doing today, we're allowing the prophetic to move us more than we're allowing the scriptures to move us. Can I share something with you? It's okay. Anybody can prophesy to you. But if they're going to have influence over your life, they better know their Bible. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? If they're going to prophesy to you, praise the Lord, let them prophesy to you. But if they're going to have influence over your life, they need to lead you and guide you into all truth. Jesus said, if you keep my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. The problem with that scripture is people take it out of context. They take it out of context because they don't read the one in front of it where it says you have to continue in the word. The Holy Spirit's not going to tell people something to draw his people out of the word. You need to be listening for. Now watch this. We have been conditioned. We have been conditioned to brand people as our prophets who only speak to confirmation. Do you know that true and authentic prophets are going to tell you the truth, whether it confirms with you or not? Did you hear what I said? And usually it does confirm with you because people who get offended are not people who don't know what you're saying. They know exactly what you're saying, but they just didn't want you to tell them. 
Prophets are being dismissed all the time. And they're not the popular ones that are on the television. They're not the popular, popular ones that you're seeing on your social media. These prophets are the 7,000 that God concealed even from the mainstream prophet Elijah. There are prophets that are rising up on the scene and they're going to declare the word of the Lord. They're not going to have any bias. They're not going to be separated in their spirit. They're not going to be double minded because I see a lot of Christians. One in you over here. I'm super Republican. The next thing you over here. I'm super Democratic. Can I share something with you? You should be like the commander of the Lord's army. When he showed up, and even though Joshua was selected by God, Joshua said, are you with us? And he said, listen, man. Come on. They only say the things because they want to confirm. Come on. Come on, Tyler. And so, you know, when, they, when he showed up, he said, listen. He said, listen. Uh, the commander of the Lord's army, Joshua, who was chosen by God, he said, hey, are you on our side? He said, I'm on neither. I'm on the Lord's side. And this is what people are saying while being prejudiced and biased of a political party. No, you're not on the Lord's side. You're not on the Lord's side because the Lord's side is, is provoking a spiritual kingdom. Now, listen, I voted for Donald Trump and people are attacking me because I'm saying you need to honor the office. If you are a patriot, do you honor the offices of America? I don't care who's in the seat. You don't have to agree with them, but you honor that office. You honor that office. Can I tell you right now, we are moving. The world is moving in a spirit of lawlessness. You want to know why? I know there were things that were stolen in the election. We know there's evidence. All of that stuff will be brought. It will be brought right before everybody to see. But our job as Christians is to posture ourselves that many will be saved, that many will be won, that many will be able to come to the kingdom of God. You are fighting a battle. A lot of people are trying to fight a battle that you ain't never going to win. Some things are only left into the hands of the Father. Some things are only left into the hands of the Son. That's why you're not going to know the day or the hour, and you're definitely not going to know the Antichrist. That's what the Bible says. Did you catch what I said? We have got to stop fighting. We have got to stop. F I, am so, I am so frustrated. I grew up in, in, in neighborhoods. I grew up in neighborhoods. OK, where gangs I have my grandma, one grandma lived in a crip neighborhood. One grandma lived in a blood neighborhood and I had to travel between these neighborhoods riding on my bike. Thank God everybody knew me. Thank God everybody. When I got to jail, they knew me. The crips was in the blood. Zone. And they was like, who you going to hang with? I'm not hanging with nobody. Did you catch what I said? I was like this when I was in the world. When I went to jail, it wasn't because I yielded to a gang. It wasn't because I yielded to a conversation. It wasn't because I yielded to a particular party. The red and the blue, the Democrats, the Republican, the Crips and the blood. We all doing the same thing. We all doing the same thing. There's nothing new under the sun, just different cultures, but the same old mess. The same old mess. And guess what? Red and blue always fighting over territory. Rather, it's in a neighborhood, in a ghetto, or it's the United States of America. We're fighting over property. You always going to have colors when you're dealing with... Man, y'all not ready. Y'all not ready to hear what I got to say. You're not ready to hear what I got to say. Because at the end of the day, the Lord is going to rebuke. That's why he's rebuking the prophetic right now. That's why he's rebuking the government. He's rebuking the world right now. And church, if you are a part of the church, you need to already know. That ain't nothing going to get better until Jesus shows up. I'm sorry. Newsflash. Here's a prophetic word. Occupy until he comes. Here's a prophetic word. Be faithful when he finds you doing what you've been told to do. You, you cannot reverse the red letter. You ain't going to intercede it away. I'm fasting. You say, no, you're doing. All you're doing is you're on a diet. You'll fit your dress by, by the time you're done. You'll fit those skinny jeans that have been too tight anyway. You're going to fit your skinny jeans by the time you're done. But nothing's going to happen in the spirit realm because God has given prophetic priority over the red letters. God has given prophetic priority. And kingdom citizens can see that God has reached in sovereignly and adjusted the trajectory of the church. God has reached in sovereignly because he's sovereign and shifted the trajectory of the church. And you, if you don't sense it, if you don't understand, yeah, you're saying something big is going to come. Yes, yeah, something big is going to come in the spirit realm, not in the United. I don't see it. I don't see it. And let me share something with you.
When God told me in 20, 2016 that Donald Trump was going to be president, he said, I said, God, why? Because I didn't want Trump and I didn't want Hillary. I didn't want little Hitler and I didn't want Donald Trump because I knew his attitude. He's a good businessman. He did a good job. And if y'all want to stone me, I don't care to be honest, I don't care. This is my Facebook. You don't like it? Keep scrolling and get off. But at the end of the day, when I said, these are the two candidates we got. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And when I when, when I barely started, I barely started to vote again. I said, you got to be kidding me. These two. And the Lord said, vote for Donald Trump. I said, why? He said, because he's Nebuchadnezzar. When you read the story of Nebuchadnezzar and you read some of these apologies that have been going on, God spoke to me in 2016 about this. And I had a disagreement with one of my friends because he voted democratically and I voted republicly. And he was a prophet and I'm an apostle. We were good friends and we were looking at each other like, what? Like, I'm saying, hey, this is what God said. He could not tell me God told him to vote that way. But I told him why God told me to vote this way. And guess what? I voted again. I voted again for Donald Trump, not hearing nothing. God didn't tell me nothing. And guess what? I don't beg God and I don't be looking, oh, God, you got to tell me. No, he is in a love relationship with you. He will communicate to you what he wants. He will have a discussion with himself, just like he did with Abraham. Shall we tell Abraham what we're going to do? Shall we tell Abraham what's going to happen? God will let you in. You don't barge in to the counsels of God. God invites you. He invites you. And the Lord didn't tell me nothing. But you know what I did? I said, well, let me survey some of the areas. Okay, he did pretty good for the government. He did pretty good. He got us out of bondage. He got us out of the financial debts. He got us out of certain things. Listen, as him not being a politician, he did a phenomenal job, straight up. I don't care what nobody say. Donald Trump did a phenomenal job. Yes, he did. But guess what? There's still other areas that need to be adjusted. There's still spiritual things that God wants to do. And I'm telling you, listen, Billy Graham said it best, and I agree with Billy Graham. He said, if God does not judge America, then we need to apologize. To, he needs to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, if God doesn't judge America, then, then God needs to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. And the reason why I'm saying this, the, that I agree with him, the reason why, because judging brings cleansing. Judgment brings cleansing. That's why the Bible says the spiritual man judges all things. Paul said, I judge myself, lest I be judged by any of you. How do we judge ourselves? By confessing our sins, confessing our faults, and cleansing comes in. The Bible says, when I confess unto the Lord, he is faithful and just to forgive me and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Everybody hit the share button. I'm going off. I'm going completely off. Because at the end of the day, as a kingdom citizen, that election is not going to remove the blood of Jesus from working in somebody's life. The Holy Spirit from working in, I bet you. And watch this. Every time we discredit something that God desires to use, then God uses the very thing we discredited. The minute we say God can't do that, that's the moment God uses that very thing to slap everybody in the face because he's not going to let nobody touch his sovereignty. Are you listening to what I'm saying? God shifts his weight around as he wants to. And I love him for that. He's going to do exactly what he wants to do. And he's still going to be God. He's still God on the throne. Regardless of who. What, what are we going to say about third? Why are we fighting over politics here when third world countries, they barely call on the name of Jesus and Jesus show up. We need three, four, five songs. We need a whole hour of soaking. You want to know why? Because they have realized that they are governed by a theocracy and we're governed by a democracy. I'm going to tear this thing up. We are trying to vote on the kingdom of God. You can't vote in the kingdom of God. You have to have an edict or a declaration from God. You have to have a promise from God, not just a prophetic word. You've got to have a promise because prophecy and promise are two different things. A prophecy See, you got to go to war with a promise is yes and amen. Anybody reading their Bibles? Anybody reading their Bibles? Anybody reading their Because when God promised the seed, there was no interruptions in Jesus getting here. There were no delays in Jesus getting here. He got here. The devil tried everything to stop him. And he even tried to steal his election. Come on here. Tried to put another uh, someone in his seat. Guess what? And it didn't work. It's because he was promised. He was a promised seed to Abraham. There's a difference between prophetic and promise. And until we learn the protocol of this, we will continue to treat the prophetic as if it will never break apart. It will never fall down. It will never have any issues. It will always have issues because it's only designed to go to war. 
but it's never designed, watch this, to be the promise. It is not your resting place. I don't rest in a prophetic word. I rest in a promise. Are you listening to me? And so I voted for Donald Trump. I stand up for the kingdom of God, but I'm going to honor Joe Biden. He is my president. I'm sorry. And I'm not going to split the country. I'm not going to, I'm not going to split the church. I have people in my church that are on both sides. I love these souls and I'm going to fight for these souls and I'm going to fight for equality and I'm going to move the lines that blur racism. My church is not black. My church is not white. My church is not Mexican, but we have the power of God. If you watch our lives, you'll see the power of God. The dead get up. The, 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 the people in wheelchairs, they leave out of wheelchairs. People, God blesses the people who are in our church. And everywhere we go, the, the glory of God moves. You want to know why? Because we're not on anybody's side. We're on the Lord's side. Ex-pimps, ex-prostitutes, ex-drug dealers, ex-criminals, businessmen, uh, statesmen, different people. A lot of people go to our church. A lot of people are part of our online ministry, doctors and professional people. And I'm not going to let them be demonized. By somebody who's saying, this is the Lord. This is the Lord. This is God's man. The last time God had a man, his name was Jesus. Anybody want to, anyone to catch that revelation? Catch that revelation. Catch that revelation. And don't even get me started on national prophet. Because there ain't even no national prophet in the New Testament. You're not going to find one. You're not going to find one. We be out here on some foolishness. Foolishness. Come on here. We got to stop it. And ain't nothing worse than believing the wrong thing. Ain't nothing worse. I've done it. You've done it. How did it feel when you believed the wrong thing? When you found out it was wrong? A lot of people are going to be hurt. And all of you deliverance ministers, y'all going to have to be ready. Y'all going to have to be ready because these folks are going to be emotionally scarred. They're going to be towed up. You want to know why? Because they believe the wrong thing. They followed the wrong voice. They heard the wrong thing and it did not lead them into the Bible. And so when the wind and the waves start blowing, which they're coming, those wind and the waves, the wind and the waves are upon us. They're here. Watch how people's houses fall apart. Watch how people's marriages fall apart. Watch how people's ministries fall apart. And I'm speaking apostolically as an apostle unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Now watch this. The reason why I'm talking like this is because I love the church. I've invested in this thing. I'm invested. I've given my life. I've traveled to countries where they can kill me to preach the gospel. I have given my life for this thing. I serve my local body. I serve in my city. I'm connected to my local pastors in my city. I love them. I pray for them. They are part of my, and I, I'm not going to sit up here and let ignorant folk basically drag God into something that's flawed. God is flawless. God is not flawed. God is not flawed. The Bible says, let God be true and every man be a liar. And we cannot allow these individuals, I am so sick. Sometimes they make me want to fight, but I'm saved. Sometimes they make me want to go hood, but I'm saved. I'm a consecrated man. I'm an educated man. So here's what I got to say. Rather you're a Democrat, rather you're a Republican, we know that the Bible is our etiquette. It is our constitution. The Bible is your constitution. The Bible is your constitution. And the power behind all of the decisions made is the Holy Spirit, the Bible, and the plan of God. Now watch this. I'm planning on the church seeing more souls come to Christ this year. I'm planning on the church being so promoted this year. Only those who can hear what the spirit of the Lord is doing. There ain't no compromise in my spirit because I'm not voting on that stuff. I will constantly from my pulpit. Some of y'all, y'all, y'all 501 C3. How y'all going to talk about, man, never mind. Now, you got a, you got a contract with bail and you sit up here trying to rebuke somebody else. You got a contract with bail and where you can't even talk. You're owned by the corporation, the corporation owned by the state. And you sit up here talking about, I'm, well, we got to stand up for God. We on the lower side. Well, do you have a 501c3? You on bail side to me. You, you're working for bail. Don't come to me with that foolishness because in a 501c3, it tells you you can't talk politically. It tells you you can't go against anything. It tells you you can't. And you sit up here. You're going to, y'all, man, these folks is hypocrites. 
Straight hypocrites. I'll tell you how to file. I do that. Me and my lawyer, we do that. We help churches get free. We help ministers get free. You were never intended on being a part of the, the, the world and the world's culture. That's why there was separation of church and state. God did that and you undid it. Everybody slapping the hand of the Lord. Whenever God does something that people don't like, they slap his hand. No, nah, it can't be that. Not the Lord. It don't feel. It's got to be. Listen, let me share something with you. Can I share something with you? God ain't got to do everything that I want him to do the way I want him to do it. Because then again, he would not be God. I cannot throw God into the box of my confirmation because the things that he's confirming, he still does way more than I understand. And confirmation deals with your understanding. God is so big. God is so huge. That's why he has to use diversity and he has to use different groups and he has to use different members to have the same body. We have got to stop. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell, well, I'll help you, Jarvis. I got your back. Don't worry. We'll help you. We'll help you. And they overcharging y'all anyway to file that. They overcharging you guys. They are overcharging you when you can get the same benefits by having just the EIN. Man, I could go there. I could just totally go there. They are ripping the, we're being ripped off as a church. We just, we're being ripped off. God bless you, Kamora. Thank you for joining. We need to stop thinking that God is not going to have his way. Because we have uh, any person in the presidency. Can I tell you, the church thrived under Caesar. Jesus never rebuked Caesar. Jesus never dishonored Caesar. He said, give the Caesar what you owe Caesar. Give the God what you owe God. Come on here. Now, when the lines blur, the only time a Christian is really supposed to be standing up and fighting is when God's rights are being revoked. When God's rights are being revoked. Okay? When they say you can't pray, then you fight. When they say you can't worship, then you fight. Oh, but they shut down our church building. Y'all wasn't going to church anyway. Y'all wasn't the best attended. Y'all was not going to church all the time. Some of y'all said, oh, we can't do it. Y'all wasn't even giving to support the church. So if the church closed because of your lack of giving or the church is closed because they're trying to stop the spread of coronavirus, it doesn't matter. The church would have closed because you ain't giving. Can we just be honest for a second? Can we just tell the truth for a second? And then everybody, you saw to all the people online, you don't even bring a tie to your church. You saw to everybody online. And then when everybody go online, y'all get mad because you see all the cash apps. And make up your mind. Make up your mind, church. Please, I need you to make up your mind. Because this is not what Jesus is coming back for. Jesus is not coming back for this. Jesus is coming back for a bride without spot or wrinkle. A bride with no hypocrisy. A bride who is a bright, shining light. You, listen, man. My government could be dark and you still won't touch my light switch. Because my light switch ain't powered by what's going on in the world. My light switch is powered by intimacy and the spirit of God and the word of God. My light switch ain't powered. Y'all not listening to what I'm saying? My light switch ain't powered like that. You're not wired like that. So why are you letting this stuff move you? The Bible says that the, the, the righteous are bold as a lion. If you got fear on you, it's because you ain't living right before the Lord. There's some areas that you need to adjust. I'm not scared of nothing. Did you hear what I said? I'm not scared of this stuff. I already defaulted on my life. I already tried to commit suicide and he stopped me. I already know what it's like to, to get the edge of death. I already know what it is. You got to die to yourself, man. If you're going to make it, if you're going to endure to the end, you got to learn how to die to yourself. Why are you scared when God has you in the palm of his hand? Why are you nervous when God is speaking to you? Why are you nervous when you got a prayer life? Why are you nervous if you're standing on the word? Tell me. I don't care who's in the Oval Office. They not going to knock my Jesus off his throne. I don't care. You like God. People be acting like God up there like, oh, oh, my God, I can't believe they stole the election. Oh, my God. What am I going to do? Somebody find my crown. I got to go down and somebody find my crown. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. What are you scared for? What are you scared for? You ain't got no business being scared. You're a Christian. You're a born-again believer. You've been bought with a price. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are the blessed. You are the apple of his eye. You are the anointed. You are the call. Come on here. You are the ambassador of the kingdom of God. Nothing, watch this. As long as your government ain't shaky, no vote you cast is going to shake your government. Come on here. 
And God don't want y'all to be comfortable here anyway. That's why he doing what he doing. Because too many of y'all is so comfortable. People are too comfortable here. You think this is your place? You think this is your government? Man, Jesus is coming with a government on his shoulders. Last time I checked, when I see revelations in the Bible of heaven, I don't see no Senate. I don't see no house. I don't see no elephants or no donkeys. I see an ox. I see a lion. I see the eagle. And I see the face of a man. Come on, y'all not ready for me. Y'all not ready for me. Praise the Lord. And the only reason why I'm on this is because my heart is broken. My heart is broken that we allow small temporal things that will fade away. The Bible says focusing on the temporal things, they will fade away when we're called to focus on the eternal things that will last forever. I don't know about you, but I'm going to have a great 10 years. I already know what God told me. I'm going to have a great 10 years. You know why? Because I already know what it's like to be free while locked up. <laughs> I'm not scared. Of, I'm not scared of no laws. Your job is to train your children. Your job is to be a light to your community. Listen, if you're not evangelizing, then your vote means nothing anyway. How are you going to vote and say we need righteousness in America, but you won't bring a soul to Christ where they can experience righteousness, where righteousness can be multiplied throughout all of the different bodies in the temples here on the earth? Why are we so focused? We need righteousness in our nation. Well, when did you start making disciples? Jesus said it. He gave us a solution. He said, make disciples. We would have more Christians in the government if we were to do this 10 years ago. If you were to get one person to come to the Lord each month, if you were to focus on a person, one person each month and double it the next month, double it the next month, double it. Y'all not doing that. People ain't doing that. I still evangelize. My church still hit the street. Our church, even with, with COVID, we were still hitting the street with masks and folks getting saved. People coming to the Lord. You want to know why? Because disciples don't quit. We're not moved by what's going on in the world. And that don't mean we're not supporting. Listen, we still pay taxes. We still vote. And we still pray for whoever's in office so that we can live a peaceable life in godliness and righteousness, in which is good in the sight of the Lord. I'm not going to choose no side. But I voted for Donald Trump and he lost whatever happened. He didn't get the seat. And I've been posting on purpose because I wanted to see the heart of the people, how people will attack other Christians. They come in, they say, you can't believe like that. You got to believe like this. That's socialism. How you a conservative, you talking about you don't want socialism, but you being a socialist. Somebody please explain to me. How, how we become hypocrites. We're becoming hypocrites. Straight up. And, and we're doing it in the name of God. The Pharisees did that too. They put unbearable rules, the, the measurements of men, and they turned them, the commandments of men into the doctrines of God. And then you're attacking people. No wonder Jesus said that people will turn you over and think they've done God a good service. They really believe, I really believe I'm serving the Lord. Come on here. We're going to break up America because we patriots. How come y'all patriots wasn't uh, attacking or tackling these Antifa guys? It was way more of y'all. How come y'all weren't stopping them from getting into the Capitol? Bill? How come y'all? I'm so sick. I'm so sick. I'm so sick. My stomach hurts. My stomach hurts. If I see somebody going after something that I value, I'm going to get involved. Guess what? I get out of jail. They're going to let me out of jail. I'm going to say, hey, I'm stopping them from getting in there. And I might get a medal and I might get a pardon. Come on here. I feel like preaching. Can you drop my felony down to a misdemeanor? Come on here. I would have definitely jumped on that. I would have got a pardon before Trump left office. You better believe it. All right. So I'm only here just I'm only here just to say that, listen, man. Our job is to win souls. Our job is to make disciples. Our job is not to be fighting over who's in all. And guess what? It's going to get worse. You're not going to stop the Bible. It's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. It's going to get bad. It's going to get bad. There's nothing you're... Let, let me help you. Let me whisper something. Let me, let, me, let me help you. Let me help you. Let me help you. Let me help you. Jesus said it's going to get worse. Did you hear that? Okay, let me say it again. Let, let me tell you, let me tell you who else. The Holy Spirit said it's going to get worse. He said men will watch worse and worse. It's going to get worse. This system is not ours. 
you ought to be thankful that they're allowing you to participate. Okay? Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? All right? This system is not ours. This world is not ours. This government, I'm sorry, you serve it because you're a good citizen and you're a great Christian and you should. You should be a good. Listen, I had to restore my image to the state of California and to the United States of America because they have invested in me, the education I got, the life I get to live, the liberties. And even though there's racism and everything, I still got liberty. Because I've been to third world countries and y'all don't know what persecution is. Y'all really don't know what racism is unless you've been to Africa during the genocide. Unless you've been to South Africa during the apartheid. Unless you've been, come on, y'all need to listen to what I'm telling you. Yeah, it's bad over here. I'm not, I'm not diluting the damage of what happened here. But I'm saying there are greater measures of persecution. And the church has never really been persecuted. But we are. It's coming. It has to come. You want to know why? Because we focus on everything else, but we're not focused on how many, uh, how many homes are really focused on making disciples. Jesus gave them Pentecost and guess what they did? They sat there. Oh, we love Pentecost. We love tongues. We love praying in the Holy Ghost. We love the presence of God. Oh God, we love being in Jesus. But Jesus said, I gave you a commandment. And that's why God allowed Paul to come through. Folks was getting stoned. Folks was dying. Things were happening. Some of these dreams and visions y'all having is because the Lord is trying to warn you that if you don't get your butt up, and if you don't get out there and start getting his souls that he came after, that he been telling you about, you think God want to just sit in prayer and just talk to you all the time? God is talking to you to send you out. Every time Jesus went into prayer, he came out to do some work. Every time Jesus went back into prayer, he came back out to do some work. If you're going into God, God's going to tell you who can we send, who will go for us. Why are we praying so much, but there's no mobility? It's because we are priming ourselves for persecution. And I'm going to share one more thing with you. <clears throat> I'm going to share one more thing with you. Sometimes God will give a king, a president, a government that the people deserve. Sometimes God will let you say, who do you want to choose? Barabbas. Sometimes God will give you a Barabbas. Are you hearing me? Sometimes God will let you have exactly what you need to help you change. Some people weren't praying. They're going to be praying now. Some people weren't worshiping. They're going to be. Some people weren't even supporting their church. You supporting your church now, ain't you? Oh, they closed the door on your church. I bet you supporting that church now. Or if you was already ready to go, you left. You left. A lot of stuff was revealed in his time. A lot of people were revealed in his time. And I'm just here to tell you, we need to stop bullying people. Is it about free will? Is it about, because the Holy Spirit don't force nobody to do nothing. Why is it, I, why is it, man, I can't even force people to do good for themselves. They're going to call me a Jezebel if I force them. I say, hey, you're not going to do that. Cut that relationship off. They're killing you. You over there smoking dope. You're doing all that stuff. It's because of that relationship. If I was to do that, they'd call me a Jezebel. And that's really just being a good shepherd, being a pastor, pulling out my rod, bringing discipline. They'd be like, you're a Jezebel. This whole cancel culture, this whole socialist system, this whole racism, there's a lot of things that are coming together right now as we speak. Racism, socialism, prejudice, all kinds of things. Even the church, division, religion, all of this stuff is happening right now. And so we're looking like this. Instead of looking like this. You coming to get me yet? Jesus said when these signs appear, he said, look up for your redemption. Draw what you coming when you coming. And in the meantime, and some people say, well, you just looking to go up into the heavens. You just looking to go up. God bless you, Pastor Brian. You just looking to go up into the heavens. Listen, I've been waiting to see Jesus. I don't want to just have a vision with him. I want to spend time. I want to sit in his presence. I want to cast my crown. I want to be next to him. I voted for Donald Trump, all right? And y'all critique me. I say, listen, Biden is president. Rather, he stole it or whatever. God, by, the sovereign, by his sovereignty, allowed that to happen. It is what it is. But I'm not going to demonize Republicans. I'm not going to demonize Democrats because we all don't believe in those policies just because I say submit to the, come on, I love you. 
Thank you, Prophet Gina. At the end of the day, it's like we we listen. If I say submit to your governing authority, that don't mean you got to agree with the bills he's writing and the laws. You're never going to agree with the stuff that's wicked. And you shouldn't agree with the stuff you're doing that's wicked. The lies you're telling, the gossip you're spreading, the people you're hating, the stuff that's going to, we should, it's all sin. It's all sin. And this is why we need to be hungry for, we need God. We're tarrying for God to come back. You know what I'm saying? We're tarrying for God to come back. All right. Now, I've spoken to different parties and I've spoken to close people in the different parties. All right. Had a conversation with somebody who had dinner with the Trumps. Who knows the press secretary? Send me pictures. It's in my phone. I've had conversations with Democrats. I've had conversations because I'm gauging every area. And can I share something with you? Oh, y'all not, I don't think y'all ready to hear that. I don't think y'all ready to hear that. Because everybody just want, y'all just, y'all just running on, y'all just running on, y'all just running on how you just feel that, and this is one of the crazy things. We feel that the American spirit is the Christian spirit, and it's really not. Yeah, stand up for your country. Yeah, promote righteousness. But those spirits, they intersect in certain areas and they don't agree. They do not agree. They do not agree. Because the American spirit produced Republicans and it produced Democrats. There's going to be an intersection and they don't agree. They're going to clash, especially with your kingdom, with your kingdom ethics and what God is calling you to. They're going to crash. They're going to crash and you're going to have to make a decision. All right. So what I'm saying is, don't be attacking your brothers and sisters. Believe what you're going to believe. Amen. Everybody can believe what they're going to believe. But don't be jumping on folks. Don't be disrespecting folks. Don't be. That's not the fruit of the Holy Spirit. There's nowhere in that. Even when Jesus opposed the, the systems of wickedness, he walked in love. He walked with respect. He walked with respect and love. Amen. And that's basically what I'm talking about. All right, I don't got no time to play no games and I'm not going to, people not going to be bullying and, you know, that's socialism. You can't force people to believe what you believe and you can't force people to not believe what, what they don't want to believe. What they want to, what they want to believe. If they believe something, you can't force them to not believe that. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, I voted for Donald Trump. I stand for the kingdom, but I'm also going to obey this Bible. And if Donald Trump is coming back, guess what? I'm still going to honor the office of the president. If Biden's in there, they find a way to get him out. Guess what? I'm going to honor Biden as president. But I'm also, if, he, if Trump comes back in there, I'm going to honor him as president. Because as a patriot, you honor the systems of America if you're going to be a patriot. And that's not even talking about being spiritual. I'm not even talking about being spiritual. I'm not talking about being a Christian right now. I'm talking about what's good for the nation. Is that we respect the processes and the protocols of the systems that have been implanted here. That's what's good for the nation. But if you're now, if you're going to be a Christian now, you got to do way more than what you would do for the nation. Come on here. More people have been posting on Donald Trump and what's wrong with Biden and Biden winning all this stuff. than you even been posting about Christ. Think about it. All right. I'm just here to say. Stay focused. Stay focused on what really matters. Because rather he gets another four years or he don't get another four years. It doesn't matter. Christ is preparing the body of Christ to come forward. Christ is preparing the body of Christ. Well, I, I mean, that's, that's, that's your prerogative, uh, Brian. That's your prerogative. Because every, every, there's sinners in the Republican Party as well. That's your prerogative, men of God. And I only say that because you put it there. That's your prerogative. The Bible says Romans 13. Uh, Nero had crucified Christians. That's 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 a perspective thing. That's perspective, man. You know, I love you, but that's perspective. I think that as Christians, we need to do more. Jesus died for everybody. Jesus died for everybody. Everybody. And we can't listen, man. So what I'm saying is we got to stop it. We need to have love. There needs to be kingdom love. There needs to be kingdom life. And we can still oppose the laws. We can still oppose the God's not telling you 
to submit to abortion. God's not telling you to submit to um, whatever the LGBTQ and the pedophile. God's not telling you to submit to that. But what I'm saying is, is there's an office to be recognized. There is a system. How are we going to honor it with one person, but we won't honor it with everybody else? This is where we as the church, we can't be biased. We can't be biased. Because God is using it. I promise you God is using it. I promise you God is using it. And we, if we think that God has to use only good people, we are not reading our Bibles. And we are not looking at ourselves. Let's be honest. None of us have angel feathers. None of us have the superseding light where we don't make mistakes. If, if we saw our sin the way God saw, sees our sin and still forgives us, we would stop it. I'm telling you. When you truly get in the presence of God, he humbles you. Isaiah saw the Lord. He said, whoa, I'm undone. I'm undone. The holiness of God causes people to fall down. The glory pushes people down. We have got to stop doing this. We have got to stop doing this. And this is where I'm at. Man, I voted for him, man. I believe he's the best for the country. I believe he was the best. He was going to do the best job. And he was going to keep some of this crazy stuff from entering into the United States of America. I believe that. But then I also know what the Bible says. In the last days, this was going to happen. These are red letters. So now we have people come along and they prophesy something different. Hey, well, amen. Praise the Lord. That's fine. We can prophesy. But prophesying does not break prophecy. There's nowhere in scripture you can prove that. A person prophesying something was supposed to prophesy from prophecy. But now we've turned prophesying into something else. And if you're accurate, you're accurate. If you're not accurate, then you take the hit. You take the hit. All right? So, like I said, I got people that believe that Trump is coming back. I love them. I support them. They're a blessing to me. But then I got people who, who are saying, hey, man, you know, he's not coming back. Biden is president. Let's do it. I respect them. I love them. I support them. And I'm not, and I'm not, listen, at the end of the day, I've made my decision. I'm kingdom. I'm kingdom, yo. I'm with Jesus, man. I'm on a, that's the Lord's side. That's the Lord's side. The Lord's side is what? Go and make disciples. Go be a light to the nations. But attacking people over an election to where you're saying that people aren't saved because they don't believe what you believe or they don't believe the prophetic word from somebody who got, and even from a person who said the prophetic word they're using is from an individual who said, you know what? I may miss it at times. I may not be right, but this is what I believe God is saying. He would say it all the time. I know people who know him personally. Okay? Just got off the phone with one of them. All right? So, please, we got to stop. We got to stop. And if you choose to not like me, you choose to unfriend me, or you choose to block me, God bless you. I'll see you in the kingdom courtroom. Amen.